profits and producer surplus. So let us first of all define what a producer surplus is. Then we will link it to the profits. So we have the supply function like this. So you have the quantity supplied here. You have the price here. And this is what, let's say, my supply function looks like, supply curve. Supply curve uh, S, right? Supply curve S. So what I'm asking myself is this, that uh, if I'm going to supply, let's say X star unit, then I'll be supplying X star unit according to this function at this price. So according to this function, I'll be supplying this thing. So I'm going to supply X star unit at price P star like this. Okay. So this is the price at which I'll be selling X star units. Now just think about it. For the first unit which I was selling, I was hoping to get only this much price. But what I'm getting is P star. So there's a surplus. This much is a surplus, na beta? This guy is a surplus. Huh? So what I'm getting is this much price. So this is a surplus. Right? Similarly, for the second unit, I was willing to get a little higher price than the first unit, this much. But, I'm, what, but what am I getting is P star. What am I getting is P star. And then I can continue this till X star also. So for X star, I was willing to sell at P star only and I'm getting also P star. So this entire area, this entire area, what do you think it is what my uh, producer surplus is? This entire area is what the producer surplus is uh, so let me just write that the difference between the minimum amount she would be willing to sell, right? The extra units. For and the amount she actually sells. She actually sells the units for is the net producer surplus or producer surplus. This is what the producer surplus is. Now, suppose there is an increase in the price. Let us say. Now suppose there is an increase in the price. Tuck, 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 tuck. Here. And at the higher price, so this seller is, is willing to supply more. So at let's say P double star, she is willing to supply X double star. She is willing to supply X double star. Fair enough. Okay. Now you tell me one thing. So at P double star, what is the producer surplus? This much. 
this is going to be the producer surplus fair enough so of course it includes the earlier producer surplus also and what is the change in the producer surplus what is the change in the producer surplus only this area beta okay i'd rather use a different thing so that it becomes very very simple to see this this area this is what the change in the producer surplus is now don't you think that what is happening out here so this change in the producer surplus is the combination of the two areas one is this area which i have just marked this area and another is this area so this change in producer surplus is the combination of two areas this area this rectangular area and this triangular <clears throat> area what is this rectangular area telling you it is telling you the increase in producer surplus which you are going to get because of selling the earlier extra units itself at the higher price i can listen to me carefully you were able this area let me call this area as r this area is telling you that you are able to sell the earlier sold extra unit at p star but you are now selling this earlier extra units also at the higher price p double star so that is generating some surplus and this triangular area t which is telling you that because the prices have gone higher you are willing to supply more that is also generating one kind of surplus right so let me just write that the rectangular area r right the rectangular area r it measures the gain it measures the gain from selling the units units previously sold what were the units previously sold x star at higher price p double star right and this triangular area t what is this measuring right it measures the gain from selling the extra units at the higher price uh, so it measures the gain from selling the extra unit Higher price, P double star. So, what are the extra units you are selling? X double star minus X star. These are the extra units which you are selling, right? Now, just think that uh, there is a firm, and uh, it is facing. You have the market price here. and we have seen earlier yesterday also that p is equal to mc is what my supply curve is right so let's say my supply curve it looks like this right so if the price goes below p not uh, the firm is not going to supply anything this is what my short run 
marginal cost is. This is what my short term marginal cost is. Uh, now, when the price is even not, uh, the quantity supplied according to the short term marginal cost, which is acting like a supply curve, is Q naught. Okay, let me also make the another price. When the price goes above to P1, the quantity, so at that price, according to the supply function, the firm is willing to supply Q1. So when the price is, let's say P1, this guy is, is uh, willing to supply Q1. The firm is willing to supply Q1. That is what my marginal, that, that is what my profit maximizing condition also P is equal to MC. And at price P2, the firm is willing to supply Q2. At price P2, the firm is willing to supply Q2. So what is supply curve showing? Supply curve is showing the minimum price at which the firm is willing to supply a given amount of output, right? So let me just write that. Supply curve shows minimum amount at which uh, the minimum price rather we should rather say like this the minimum price which the firm will accept for producing its output. Uh, will accept for producing its output. And you know, the profit maximizing condition for the perfectly comparative firm is what? P is equal to MC. So when the price is P1, according to this P1, this is going to be the MC. And, and according to that MC, the firm is going to supply Q1, right? So what happens is that when market price is going to rise from P1 to P2, the firm is going to supply the extra amount from Q1 to Q2, right? So it is able to sell Q1 also at the higher price. This you have already done earlier, beta. Your firm is able to sell Q1 also at the higher price and the extra unit Q2 minus Q1 at the higher price P2, right? At the higher price P2. So what you can say is that uh, what is going to be your welfare gain? It's basically what you're trying to say is that what is going to be the profit at price P2 minus what is going to be the profit at price P1. Profit at price P1, right? That's there. So you can, one thing which you can also do is that you can also measure the, the uh, what do you call situations of firm. You will compare the situation when it is willing to supply Q1 at price P1, and uh, when the price is P0 or below P0, it is not going to supply anything. So you can also measure how much the firm value, please write this. We can also measure how much the firm values the right to produce at the prevailing market price
at the prevailing market price relative to the situation where it would produce no output. So if the price is going to be P0 or below P0, the firm is not going to produce anything, right? Firm is not going to be producing anything. So in that case, what your producer surplus is going to be. So you are you're willing to produce Q1 at price P1, but if the price is P0, you're not going to willing, you're not willing to produce anything. So producer surplus is this, right? Producer surplus is this guy. Now you also have to understand is that at pi p naught, since you are not producing anything, these are nothing but your fixed cost only, right? So, so profits at the shutdown price are only solely made up of the losses due to the fixed cost. Write this also. This is the shutdown price at which you're not. Uh, at the price P0 and below P0, you're not, willing to, you're not willing to supply anything. So how do you write this? That profits at the shutdown price are solely made up of are solely made up of losses of all fixed cost. You, you understand this. These are the losses, beta. Uh, these guys are the losses, nothing else. Uh, so you can say how, how you can write this. So the profits at P0, there are no profits, there are negative profits. Negative profits equivalent to what? Fixed cost. Negative profits are equivalent to what? Fixed cost, right? So this is what your producer surplus is. Uh, producer surplus is given by the current profits plus the short-term fixed cost, right? So you can just write it like this. is given by is given by current profits plus short-run fixed costs, plus short-run fixed cost. Are you with me? Right. So this is what I wanted to do in this topic. Thank you, Vita.